Okay, so we're done with the presentation. That was the presentation. Now in the same folder, you have a project called Core Data Startup, right? So what I want you to do, you can copy this in your desktop. So command copy. You can always keep that so you have a reference to it. And do I have it? I already have it, but uh, shoot. Uh, uh, anyway, I'll create a new folder because I don't want to uh, coordinate that startup. Okay. <clears throat> and then I'm going to paste it in here. Okay. So in here you have the project, right? So what I want you to do is uh, double click on the Xcode project and then click on open. And we have a few things that I've already done for you. All right. Before you start, I already specified core data. I'll just show you how to specify core data when you want to create a new project. So when you say file, a new project, then this is the say single view app. Notice here you do what? Use core data. That's what, don't create a new project. I'm just showing you how to create, when you create a new project, if you want to include core data in your project, you have to make sure that you select this one. Wabe, well, is that clear? Okay, I'm going to cancel this and let's go back to the project. What do we have in the project? Let's start with the top. We have an image and we're going to store this image in this core data. We have the app delegate. We have the view controller, storyboard. We have a few screens in the storyboard, okay? Okay, we have a few screens in the storyboard. We have a table view, we have detail view, and we have a navigation controller. All right, and we have contact uh, class, table view contro controller to, to populate the table view. And then we have the model. All right, one class is important. Do you see this one called common methods? You see it? Click on it for a minute. What this has is basically everything we're gonna need to access core data. I'll use it, we'll copy it into our code instead of spending a lot of time. We'll copy it into our code and use it, all right? And then I'll tell you which part we need in, from this class. Well there, yeah? Now let's run it and see what happens. This is what it's supposed to do. You have a table view controller. You can click on it, it should show you, show you the detail of that contact. You click on back, you click on the plus, it will add, it will give you the screen to add a new contact. You click on the search, it'll give you a search button, allow you to do search. Now, none of these actually working. All they are doing is that just to display what is the app is gonna do, all right? All right, so how do we start using core data? We're gonna start with this screen. This screen, the view controller, we have an image, we wanna save the image, we have email, last name, mobile, Sorry, first name, last name, mobile, email, and when we click on save, what happens? It should save the record into where? The database. Well there, is that clear? Right, now let's take a look at that view controller class. In the view controller, <coughs> there's nothing. There is that button that allows you to do save and has no code in it. We have the attributes, you see the attributes above, those are the, sorry, not the attributes, those are the fields from the screen, txt mail, txt mobile, txt last name, image contact, image view, and first name, all right? So ideally, what should happen? Ideally is that we, when we click on save, we wanna take this information and do what with it? Save it to core data. All right, let's take a look at that common class, common method class. 
If you look on top, I have put some steps. What should we do first? Remember when we say you need, need to understand your data? You need to get your attributes. What are you trying to save and or retrieve in this class? Now, you don't have to do this, but I like to do it this way so things are clear, uh, clean and clear. So what do you do? You say, I want to define, use these attributes in my class. So I'm gonna hit command copy and go back to the view controller and then paste them in here. Now, I have my attributes, which are, what are these attributes? Where are they coming from? All right, all right, these are my attributes. Now, I skipped a very important step before we start using core data, which is what we did not create the model, right? We have not des designed the model yet. So if you click in here, do you see this one, core data Swift 3 X data model? That is where you define your entities. Right now, it's what? It's empty. So we need to create one. We need to create one. This app talks about contacts. So I'm gonna save contacts. So what are we gonna do? Do you see this plus sign here? What does it say? Add entity. So click on add entity. Here is the name, you see that entity? I'm gonna change the name, how do you change the name? Click on it twice, just click on it twice, and then change it to what? Contact entity. This name is important. This name is important. Remember when we talked about you need to get the entity description? This is the name that you will use for that entity. Okay, it's like your table name. This is your table name and then you hit enter. Now you add your attributes. What are the attributes? We have one, two, three, four, five. Okay. What are they? First one was what? First name, if you remember, right? And again, the field names are important here. First name, what is the type of that guy? String. Attribute to, last name. And again, what is the type? String. The next one, you double click on it and change it. This one is phone. And then phone, I'm gonna make it uh, also as a string. The, uh, the next one is email. Again, it's a string. And the last one is my image. Now, what is an image? Let's take a look at, let's take a, let's take a look at the list of available values for us. What are the values for us? Integer 16, integer 32, integer 64. What are these? Those are integer numbers, but it depends they specify how big is your integer number. Now, so if you don't want to save a big number, you can use 16, all right? You can use double, decimal, or float, similar, very similar. Again, the only thing is differ is that the size of the variable. Then you have a string, you have Boolean, true or false, and then you have date. So you can actually store date. This is important because sometimes you wanna run a query by date, all right? And you wanna sometimes be able to format the date in different ways to display the date in a different, like if it's a new US, it has different format than UK, for example. So you need to be able, if you store it as a date, you can always change the format. But if you store it as a string, it's a problem, yeah? Then you have binary data. What is binary data? Binary data that can represent anything. It could be an image, it could be a movie, it could be an audio file. So when you're using your WhatsApp and it's stored within WhatsApp, if it's an image, if it's an audio, if it is 
any of those, then it is stored as binary data, right? <clears throat> so that is it. Let me pause it to give you a chance to finish this. Okay, so now we're done with the entity. Let's go back to that view controller. So what do we need to do when we click on the save? What usually happens when you save? When you're cre creating a new one, what happens? What should happen here, Sabaya? The first thing you need to do is what? Validate your data. We're not gonna do any validation, right? You need to make sure that you don't put garbage into your code. The second thing that you need to do after validation is that you need to get the values from where? From the text fields, right? We, we have values from the screen, so you need to get the values from the screen. The third thing you need to do is that you start you get reference to the managed object context, to the context, right? That's what we talked about. The context is important. And after you get the context, what can you do? You create, you need to get the description of the entity you're working with. Last thing, not the last thing, five, you do what? You get or update. Sorry, in case of a new, if it's a new one, we need to create, uh, this is if it's a new, these two, because it's, we're creating a new object. So you get the description, and then what do you do? Update the fields or attributes. In the entity. Oh, sorry, before we do that, we need to create the object, sorry. So we'll say here is five. We create the object, we create a, create a managed object context. And we create a managed object, okay, using the description above. that we created, update the attributes, and finally, issue command to save it or update it. The last thing is that we save the entity to the core data. Or save object, not entities, to core data. Now it sounds a lot, but these are steps that are usually repeated anytime you're interacting with the database. So if you do it one time right, all you have to do, look at your examples that you've done before or copy and paste the data, all right? And to make it easy and fast, I've already done a lot of this work for you, all right? So now we leave this, we'll come back to this in a minute. What I want you to do is look at this common class, common methods. Before I do that, everybody ready? Okay, so let's look at common method class because this is important. We created the attributes. Now, how do we reference the managed object and the managed object context. Do you see this here in two? These things are related to the managed or to the core data. The first part is not needed. This part is not needed because this will give you array of contexts, but we'll copy it in case we need it. 
all right? Uh, we have contact. Notice what is the type here? It's not contact class. It's called what? Managed object. Remember, managed objects are records in your tables, all right? And you have the managed object context or the managed context. So those three are important, all right? And I define them in the, at the class level because they will be used in multiple functions. So instead of redoing this over and over again, I'll do it in multiple functions. All right, before I do copy these, do you see this one, Manage Object Context? Where do we get it from? We get it from the shared delegate, add delegate, persistent contain, a container, view context. If you look at the add delegate, in the, in the past, if you remember, we had only a few functions, but because we're using core data, you'll see this, core data stack, it has a persistent container, it has the uh, manage in here we have the manage object context and then we have one more manage one more function to save the data in the past in swift 2 this was a lot more than this so it became a lot simpler now i'm not going to dive into this because that will be beyond the class but this is important you see this that is the model name here it is core data swift 3 core data swift 3 we don't mess with it we leave it alone okay and it should work all right, so back, go back to that common method. So that's where you're getting the managed object context from where? From the app delegate. All right, so I want you to copy these. Command copy. And then let's go to the view controller and paste them on top right after the attributes. Okay. <clears throat> you get an error. It says, wait a minute, what are these things? NS managed object, NS managed object. They're not defined. We need to import the core data library framework. How do you do that? You go on top and you say import core data. Now it's happened. Got it? All right. Now, we are set up to use code data. Now, how do we use it in the code? Now, I have created in this common function, common class, several functions to make things easier. Try to make it, hopefully, understand it better. All right? So, go to the main method, common method class. We have a function that allow me to do find. Now, this function works by giving it a name and it search for that first name. We're not going to use it here. Now, we have not at this level. So, this function is ready. All you do, you give it a name and it will give you the object if it finds it. Okay? And we'll explain it. I'll explain it later on. Okay? We have a function called save new. So, it takes that entity and uh, it, uh, it, it creates, sorry, it creates the entity, that it gets the entity description, it creates the managed object for that entity, that's remember the steps that I put, and it updates the fields, and issue command to save it. Do we need that in our code? Do we need something like to do that for us, to save a new record? That's what we're doing, right? So let's just copy this code first, okay, this function, all right? So save a new, and it will tell you it was successful or not. So I'm going to copy this guy, all right? So command copy. And then you go to the view controller. You can put it anywhere, but I would prefer to put it at the end so I don't confuse things. So there is a bracket between the last two brackets. And then I'm gonna do command V. All right. So now, if you look, you'll have an error here. You have this thing says, this function is not there. 
right? Not found. What does this function do? Let's go back at the common method class and search for this function. So you'll see something called put data. You see it? Right here. So what I want you to do is uh, copy this function again, and command copy, and go back to the view controller, and paste it underneath it, underneath that last function. Right? Is that clear? Yeah, now that error is gone. That error is gone. All right, so we have let, copied these two functions. Let me explain to you what these functions do. The first one, it look for the entity description. So it says, give me the entity description using that managed object context. Remember the managed object context that we defined up here? That is the managed object context. This is the guy that handles all the interaction with the database. So this says, give me the entity description for what entity? This entity name. So I have to make sure the name here matches the name in the model. So I'll go to the model and make sure. What do I call it? I called it, what do I have? What I called it? Context entry, entity. So there's a problem here. There is contact, here is context. So what do you do? The best thing to do is double click on it, command copy, and then you go back there and then just paste it between these two. That's the best thing to do. So you avoid making mistakes. So now let's take a look at this, all right? So I was talking about making sure that this name is the same that you have in the model. Otherwise, you will get an error because it says the, the description, the entity description you're looking for does not exist in the model and then your application will crash. All right? After you get the description, what do you do? You create a managed object using the entity description. Now, in that managed object, what do you have? You have the field names. You have the last name, first name, all of that stuff. It's all already in this contact managed object. All right? Type. Now you do put data. What does put data do? Remember, one of the steps here says get, the, get, uh, get values from the screen, and then what is update the attributes from the entity. So what does this function do? It updates the fields in the entity with the values that we have in the attributes that we defined above. So whatever values you have in here, it will be up, it'll update that record, all right? Now, this is a little bit different than Swift 2. In the Swift 2, you just put the contact dot, uh, for example, first name equal this value because you create classes. Here, you use, um, something that Apple use quite a bit, like in cloud, uh, uh, the cloud kit, they use it in archiving, like so storing data, not in a database, but like in the local storage area for that app. So what does it do? You give it, you say, I want set value, the value that you want to set or assign to the field that in that record. So say, I want to set this value to this field. I want to set this value to this field. I want to set this value to this field. Where these fields come from? From the entity model. So first name, last name, email, image, phone, they have to be the same ones that you have in here in the entity description in the model. Otherwise, it would put you would, you get a, a wrong uh, field name and your application crash. Not only that, the type of data that you're trying to store has to match. So for example, you have email, string, 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 except the image. The image is what? Binary data. And I'll show you how we convert the image to a binary data. Let's go back to the view controller. So notice this part. 
So these are fine, first name, last name, email, and phone are fine because they are text. Remember how we define them above? We define them as string, 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 right? So, but the image comes from that logo that you saw Swift on the screen. So I need to convert it. This is that image name. I need to convert it to what? To data. How do you convert to data? This will say, give me an image called, oh, this is wrong, okay? I'm gonna fix this part, okay? This, fix this part. So this is what, you, it's gonna come from the screen. So you can do this with me. So what are we gonna do? We called it, I think called image, contact image, dot image, okay? So what that do is that it'll give you the image from the screen. Whatever image you have on the screen, you get reference to that image. All right? And then you say, after that, you take that image and convert it to data. And how do you do that? You use this command. UI image, JPEG, representation, image one, or image, that's image because this is optional variable, you have to unwrap it. And then you put the quality. This is like your scale factor. You know how when you send email sometimes and then you put an image that says, do you want the original size? You want half size? You want to put, right? This is what you put in here. So if you put one, original size. If you put 0 0.5, half size. You got it? So that is how you change the size of the image to a smaller image and then you put it in a binary data. All right, image already is data type. From notice here, I defined it as what? Data, so I'm okay, that's the binary data. And everything is okay. So only thing is left, when we call this function, we have to make sure that we have values in these attributes, otherwise you're saving nothing, all right? All right, now let's take a look at this saving you. So you put the data, after you put the data in the record, you say try, manage, uh, this is try and catch. You've done try and catch in C sharp, this is try and catch. Do, try to execute this command, and if it was successful, continue next. If it was, if it fails, it will go to the catch error, and then it prints could not save, and what do you return? False. So this function return either what? True or false. If it's true, that means it was saving the data was successful. If it's false, that means saving the data was not successful. All right? Now, how do we use this function? Okay, this function. All right. So here, here is my steps. This one we're not doing, no validating. This piece, I'm gonna do get the data from the screen. How do we get the data from the screen? Remember I have, I have last name, so you can do that with me. Last name, dot, last name equal what? TXT, last name, dot what? Dot what? Dot text, right? Okay, and then first name, equal txt, first name, dot text, all right? And email, equal email, or txt email, email, if I can type email, doesn't look I can, email, <laughs> equal txt, email, dot text, okay? And the last part, email, <coughs> um, mobile or phone equal txt mobile dot text. Now the image, we're already doing it below, but if you wanna be consistent, I would highly recommend moving the code from below and put it in here. So that's what I'm going to do. You see this code here that we did with the image, this part? So why do we keep it here? We just put it in the same piece. So I'm hit command X from here, 
and put it in the same spot with getting the data from the screen. Is that clear? That way they're all together in the same place. Okay, so these will get the text value, this will get the image data. All right. Okay, great. Now, let's take a look at these steps. Get the reference to the managed object, get the description, create managed object uh, entity. Have we done these? Did we do these three pieces? And update the attributes and save? Did we do all these pieces? Have we seen these, these pieces, all these? Where are these happening? What did we do here in this save and new? The same steps. Get the description. Get the context, get the, uh, create the entity, uh, up, update the record, and then do the save. So really, all this happens in one function that I gave you, which is what? Save in you. You got it? So if I do this, all I have to do, self, or call the function, save in you. Right? This save in you, will tell me two things, either successful or unsuccessful, true or false. So to know if it was successful or unsuccessful, simply I have to say, if saving you equal what? Equal to true, what does that mean? It means the record was, saving the record was successful. Else, Saving the record was unsuccessful. That's all you have to do. Now you can write code here, you can put alert view, or you can do the alert controller. Alert view is deprecated, but it's easier in this case, or you can just print it, whatever you wanna do. I'll put the alert view here, just because it's easier. Uh, I'm gonna say let, oh, let's just create it here, let, uh, no, we can't do that. Uh, let alert equal UI alert view is probably deprecated, yes. And then you can just say what you want to put in this alert, all right? So you can say the title, success, and then the message record was saved. Save the delegate, say self, cancel button, okay. Okay. All right. And then you can say alert dot show. All right. That's, you have, that's all you have to do. And you can do the same thing in the, instead of success, you can say fail or error is not saved. Not saved and okay. You can so cancel here instead of OK. So they're different. All right. All right. So now let's test it, see if it works. So when we click on that save, it will call this function. It will do, it'll get the information from the screen. And it will call the save new, which interact with the database, get the description. Get create an object, put update the entities in that object. Now you could have put them all in. I mean, you could have copied this and put it there, but I, you know, because we might use this function multiple times, so that's why I did it. All right, and then you can do what? Just execute the save command in the manage object context. If it was successful, it will return true. Otherwise, it will return false. So let's go ahead and run it, and then. Hopefully, we should get something that says successful. So if I click on plus, now this is the image that will be saved. 
Now I can type in anything. I didn't do hiding the keyboard. You can do that uh, yourself. I mean, we've done that previously. Okay. And then mobile, then email, and then you click on save. Success. If you click again, what will happen? It will save the same information. So you'll have two records, the same name, right? So you, you want to avoid that, you have to program it. But if you say, put a different name, and then different number, different email, and you click save, record is saved. So now I have two records. And if I do one more record, and then I click on save, now I have three records, okay? And if I go back, what should happen, those records should appear in this list. And in the next video, I'll show you how we get the information from core data because they're already saved now. They're stored on your device. Even if I close my app and leave and come back, they should be there. And in the next video, I'll show you how to get the information and list them in the table. All right? Hopefully you found this useful.